Hey guys, welcome to Fearless Cooking. Thanks for joining me today. Um, real quick, if you have questions, just uh, hit the chat function and June will see the question and relay it to me. The, the other piece that we need to cover right away is go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Because what, what we're gonna do today is we're, we're doing a, a squash casserole and I was looking for something after Thanksgiving, it's like, okay, what do you do with the leftover turkey, right? And there's all kinds of, you know, there's other ones that I'm gonna do in the future that'll be like, you know, different Caribbean takes and curry takes, but I, I was doing the squash casserole, and I thought, you know what, turkey would work well with that. So, so I've got, this is about a pound of turkey here. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna cook, we've got zucchini, we've got mushrooms, We've got onions, eggs. Uh, this is one cl uh, clove of garlic mince. That's, a, that's one kind of medium onion. That's three eggs. Um, I've got about a cup of almond flour. We're just gonna dust this stuff when we at a certain stage with just a little bit of uh, uh, fresh nutmeg. That is a half of a cup of full, of full fat coconut milk. And what am I missing? Oh, and that's like two teaspoons of thyme. And this is eh, a, eyeballs, I guess, a, a quarter, probably a third of a cup of water. And you also have your salt and pepper. I got salt and pepper. Olive oil. Yeah. And, and then, you know, we can't forget this, this uh, moral support is brought to you by Votre Sante. It's some kind of California shard that I like. I get this at Costco. Um, so here, cheers. And this squash casserole you could make without turkey as well. Is that correct? Oh yeah, and you could use any kind of, it, you could either omit the protein, okay, or if you had like say leftover ground beef, you could put that in. Um, to you, make a more complete meal. Yeah, because yeah. what I, I want to make meals as simple as possible, right? I want it to taste good, but I also, it's like, okay, how can I, Kind of minimize the num the number of things that I'm having to cook, mm. and so it's like I, I, a lot of times I will add a green vegetable to a dish, you know, just to go. All right, now it's completely rounded out. So if I eat this one, you know, like if it's soup, I want to make sure it's got something green that's in it. So everything I want is in the bowl. With this, I would probably add something green to it, right? Or, or actually, I would like accompany it with something else yeah. green. Okay. So anyway, what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and grease the pan, the casserole dish that I'm gonna put this stuff in. So I'm just gonna take just a small amount uh -huh. of butter. And this is, um, this is goat's milk butter, but you can, you know, my- You can use any kind of butter. Yeah. You can't do cow's milk, so we do Me goat's milk. Okay. Huh? Me Jude. You yeah, Jude. you Jude, yeah. sorry. You Jude can't do cow's milk, so we typically use goat's milk butter for most of what we're doing. If I'm cooking something that I know you're not going to eat, then I will do the um, Kerrygold, which is, you know, it's grass-fed cows. But this, uh, you know, a good high-quality butter is what you're looking for. So could you grease it with something else? Or is it sure, you could use coconut oil. Okay. You know, I just, you know, my, my, my fat choices are typically butter. Um, sometimes I'll use bacon grease. Sometimes I'll use lard. Uh, I'm going to do tamales over the holidays, and I'll use lard for that. But then, you know, the other greases, you know, the other fats that I'll use are typically olive oil or avocado oil. And I guess you could use that for this. I just wanted something that was a little more solid when I put it in there. So I'm gonna sit this over to the side, put some butter off my hands, just kind of rinse it off. It's not like raw animal protein, so I don't freak out about it. All right, and now then, I'm gonna go ahead and get the fire started. There we go and get the uh, skillet on there. And what I'm gonna cook, what I'm gonna use to cook this with, is I'm gonna use a couple of tablespoons of butter. I don't know if that's a couple of tablespoons or not, but it looks right. And then 
I'll toss this in the fridge for right now. And what are you going to be cooking? First? Actually, I'm going to need this for later. So let's leave it here. What are you yeah. going to be cooking in the butter first? So I'm going to cook the onions first. Okay. Oh, so you're using both olive oil yeah, and I, butter. I like, you know, they talked about using two tablespoons. They're also in, in this thing, they want some cooking liquid. So, you know, I don't want to like overdo it with grease, but I also want to have enough fat in there to cook everything in mm -hmm. and to have a little bit of something left over. Uh, the reason I'm adding the water in is because mushrooms just kind of soak all the, the, the fat up and I want, I, I want to make sure that we get everything done. So you'll be adding that later though. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to let this, you know, kind of the butter melt and then we'll start adding stuff in. Talk a little bit more about mixing butter and olive oil. Right? So I like the flavor profile that it gives, right? And it, it, I think it, but butter adds a distinct taste to everything, right? Right. So I just, you know, and then like, especially like butter and onions and mushrooms, it's just, it's a, it's a nice combination. Yeah. And you could, you could do it all with butter. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I like kind of the, the contribution that both of them make. All right. So we're almost, we're almost melted there. We can give it just a little bit longer. You know, and then if you weren't going to add the, the olive oil in, you know, one of the things that you can do is because you have milk solids in butter, you can't cook at real high temperatures with it or it'll burn. Mm. What you can do is that you can, you can clarify butter, which is what ghee is, and it's a lot, it, it then will allow you to cook at a lot higher temperatures. We don't need high temps with this, so this worked perfect. Okay, what are right. you putting in so now? I'm just I'm putting the onions in right now. All right, and I'm going to throw a little salt and pepper in with them. I just I always try to salt as I go along, just Layer so that the... yes, yeah, so I add kind of layers to it. Same thing with the pepper, and I'm just going to kind of move that around. How long will you cook the onions? Eh, three or four minutes. Okay. Yeah, I just what I'm going to do is look for them to soften. All right, and then I will add the uh, the garlic in. The thing with garlic that you have to be careful with is it's just real easy to burn it. Yeah. And if you know, I, I read something a long time ago. It said you know about the only thing that you can you can't recover from is burning the toast. Mm -hmm. Well. I think that what they're what they meant was as long as you don't burn whatever it is that you're cooking. Um, oh, one of them escaped, and there went that perfectly clean floor that you have. See, I, I, there's this kind of ongoing dialogue with uh, with me and Jude because she's great about about cleaning the kitchen up. The deal is I cook and she cleans, right? But I think it always hurts her feelings whenever she does this great job of cleaning the kitchen and I walk in and with literally within two minutes, I've already started wreaking havoc, right? And so it's just, it, it's the law of the universe. Things tend towards disorder and especially in a kitchen when I'm cooking. So it is what it, it, is. Is, what it is. But you know, the food yep. is so good, I suppose it's worth it. That's it. You know, if, if you're going to make an omelet, you got to break some eggs. There you go. Speaking of that, you know what? Probably we're going to use eggs in a minute. So while this is simmering here, I'll crack these eggs. So we've got that done. Now I'm going to put these where they don't wander off onto the floor. And you've tried to keep these at room temperature to eggs, right? Eh, I don't really. It's it's just I had them out. Yeah. So you know that that's kind of advantageous in some, you know. Especially with baking, it seems like. Yeah, um, yeah. But with this, it, it's it's not critical. It was just, you know, I've learned kind of as I've done this that I want to have everything out and figure out what I need. All right. Let's see. These are getting better. Oh, I can really smell them. They're very strong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just, I love the smell of cooking uh, onions. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, coconut milk in here too. In here with? In the in eggs. The egg? Yeah, okay. and then I'm going to like 
beat them up. This is for later, though. Yeah, this is for later, but it's like we got a couple minutes, so okay. we will take care of that now. And whenever I like try and whisk eggs, I always like try to like go ahead and poke through the yolk. And then I don't, I don't, when I, I don't stir it in a circle, I go this direction with it. So kind right of a whisk, in a, yeah. Like a whisk. Almost. Yeah. Just so that I'm not sloshing the stuff out of there. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take cooking liquid and pour it gradually into the egg coconut milk mixture so that we don't like get scrambled eggs whenever we put the eggs in the mixture and, um, Put it, put it in the oven. So yeah. you could use regular, uh, like cow's milk. No. You could. So, and, and that's a great question. I use coconut milk just because I don't have to worry about somebody that has a, a, a problem with milk. Um, you know, you could also use uh, full. Here's the only rule that I have when it comes to cooking. There is no place, no reason to use low fat dairy for anything okay so everything that you use with dairy you want it to be full fat because when you take the fat out of it a lot of times you lose a lot of the nutrients mm. so i want full fat dairy whenever i'm using it so i could use uh like with since jude has a cow's milk issue i could use goat's milk if i wanted to it's just that coconut milk is, is so, so much easier to use and to source. Um, the other thing you could do is that you could use yogurt. You mm -hmm. could use like full fat yogurt. That's going to give it a little extra tang. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. All right, so now then I'm going to add the garlic. And this, like I said, this is one clove of garlic. How do you know it's starting at the, what are the onions looking like? So I'll show time? you. And part of it is the smell, yeah, but yeah, smell so they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're clear. Uh, they become clear. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm just going to mix this up in there. So one of the things that happens is now those, uh, that garlic isn't going like directly onto the hot pan. Mm -hmm. Okay. They get mixed around and I'm just, it won't, you can already start to smell the yeah. garlic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so that's, that's the whole thing is what you're looking for is it's telling you, all right, it's releasing some of those oils. So now I'm going to add the um, the, the squash in, the squash, okay. squash and zucchini. And so it's kind of filling up my pan. So I'm going to have to kind of go easy when I add the mushrooms in. But I think I'm going to cook this for just a second. Yeah. Then I'll add the mushrooms. Okay, cook those down a bit to make more room. Mm -hmm. Smells heavenly. Yeah. Let's see what I'm going to do. Would you do me a favor? You know that big pot that I have that's mm -hmm. over there? I'm going to, we're going to make a change in cooking vessels. Mm. Hopefully those uh, folks who are on the call can do that too. Yes. I would suggest maybe using a um, like a larger skillet, which you're talking about? Huh? Yes. You can get this? Yes, I can. There you are. You don't want to be famous? I do not want to be famous. Wow. I did not dress for the show. All right. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dump this in here. Okay. So I have a uh, a large kind of stock pot. And I'm just going to make a quick uh, modification. Since this edge is going to be super hot, I'm going to grab something else. Stay right there. Wow. That's. <laughs> yeah, that's being very trusting, isn't it? It certainly is. That was... But you're gra grabbing the hot handle and no. screaming profanity, just, you know. Okay. Probably be fine, but we'll keep it as, as kid friendly as possible. Not to say that you know we won't have some periodic exploits, but I will do my best to never use compound rope, compound words during fearless cooking, or compound profanity. I guess I should say. Compound words are fine. Compound profanity, eh, it's probably getting a little extreme. All right, so here we go. So we've got. Back on the heat. We, we're going to put it back on the heat. So there's what we have right now. Now I'm going to add the mushrooms. And I'm going to add the water. Here we go. 
pan, I'm going to crank the heat up a little bit so we can kind of catch up. All right, here we go. Now we're cooking. So because we added a bunch of other vegetables in here, I will add a little more salt and pepper. Uh, another layer of that. Yeah. So a little more salt. And, you know, that right there, that's probably half a teaspoon. I don't, I'm not very good about measuring spices. You just kind of get to where you figure out what you like. All right. So just kind of stir that in. And this, it's going to take a little while for this to cook down. What we're trying to do with this, you know, we're, we're going to, um, and, you know, I can already kind of tell from this, we're not going to have a ton of cooking liquid. Hmm. So I know that I didn't call for this in the recipe, but actually we'll just add a little extra water. I was going to say, but you could also add like white wine to this. Mm. Okay. In fact, you know what? I'll, I'll make an, a, an addendum in it. So I'm just going to put, let's just see this way so we can see how much is going in. That's probably about half a cup. Let's toss a little wine in. That way we might end up with some cooking liquid. So you know that you, oh, because it just seems really dry. Yeah, know. and I just know that all this stuff is going to soak it up. Okay. And see, the original recipe called for two pounds of zucchini and two pounds of squash. This is one pound of zucchini and one pound of squash. Yellow right? squash, okay. Yeah. And, and, and that kind of brings me to something I wanted to talk about today, which is, all right, how, how do you like kind of modify recipes, right? So, because when I first started doing paleo, I went to all of the paleo sites and, and you know, look at paleo recipes. But what I figured out over a period of time was I could take pretty much any recipe and get some inspiration from it and then make modifications to it to put it kind of in alignment with the way I wanted to eat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this, this book has been a huge benefit to me. It's called the Flavor Bible. And, and what I like about it is that it shows you foods that have kind of a natural affinity for each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like as an example, I mean, I just, the, the thing open to cabbage, right? Cabbage in general. And it tells you that it's, it's a autumn winter crop, um, botanical relatives, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Okay. It talks about that its function is cooling, whatever that means. Its weight is medium, volume, volume moderate. I don't know what any of that is. Okay, techniques, boil, braise, raw, saute, steam, or stir fry. What they do is that they have like an, like if something is in all caps and bold, it means that the combination of this with cabbage is like, you know, first rate. And bacon, okay, well, well yeah, bacon and cabbage work great together. Caraway seeds is another one. Um, onions, especially red, um, vinegar. So if I was like going, you know, I got cabbage, I want to do something with it, I would look in the flavor Bible and see, hey, you know, I'm to look for a recipe that has cabbage and caraway seeds in it. And then I would kind of go off in that direction. Or if I saw a recipe that I said, man, that looks really interesting. Well, the first substitution that I make almost right out of the gate is nine out of 10 times a recipe is going to tell you to use vegetable oil. And I would, you know, to me, it makes about as much sense for them to tell me to put dirt in here, right? I'm just, I'm not going to use vegetable oil because I know what it does. And Olive oil is going to have a flavor. So if you're looking for something that's a real neutral cooking fat, that, that would be avocado oil. Mm -hmm. So, you know, immediately you make that substitution. And then, you know, if it's got flour in it, I'm not going to be using flour. And if it's something that I need to just thicken it with, you know, there's, there's a bunch of like kind of options there. Um, one of the, 
So what we're using today is, is coconut, I mean, is almond flour. The other, the other flour that you see used a lot with paleo cooking is coconut flour. Mm -hmm. The thing with coconut flour, you have to be kind of careful because it, it's got a lot of fiber in it and it really soaks moisture up. So like you can't look at a recipe that has regular wheat flour in it and, and just do a one for one substitution because it's not going to work. So can I ask you one yeah. quick question? Yeah. I'm, I'm imagining your viewers might be cooking right now. What what's happening with so, your pot? Yeah, so I'll show you right now. Because I hear it boiling. Right? Yeah, so it's that boiling and going? we're let's do this. It's boiling and we're starting to get some softening. Okay. So we're probably about two or three minutes away from like and we do definitely have some cooking liquid today. Uh, too much? No, it'll be fine. Okay, she yeah. can always put that off. Yeah. How, um, how, can you see, so how, what, what do you want the consistency so to be? So I'll show you. Before yeah. So it's, you know, I, it will start to kind of depress in the middle. Like as we, like the, um, the mushrooms are soft. The, the, the zucchini needs a little bit more time. The, the squash is already getting pretty close. The, you know, the beauty of this one is it's pretty forgiving. Okay, let's drop the heat down just a touch. What do you mean, what is forgiving? So there's certain vegetables that it's like, if like, okay, um, asparagus is a perfect example. If, if you kind of over hammer asparagus it just becomes this inedible mush yes. right mm -hmm. okay with with squash and zucchini they especially in something like a casserole they're going to be soft mm -hmm. right so as long as you're not burning them you're you're not you know in other words you're you're not they don't need to be al dente okay right so like green beans i don't like green beans that are just cooked down into to nothing Squash, uh, you know, I don't, I, I'm not that invested in it being a certain texture, except I don't want it raw. Yeah. And, you know, this is starting to get soft. All what of the. What do you want the mushrooms to be like before you put them uh, in? The, the mushrooms are already soft. I mean, the mushrooms are good to go. So what we're going to do, uh, my zucchini just needs about another minute maybe two well maybe another couple of minutes and then in just a second right before we get to that point i'm going to add the thyme and the turkey just to get it all good and mixed up mm. yeah when will the eggs and uh, coconut milk be used they're, they're going to get added once i get it put in the glass uh, okay and that's what i yeah. use the cooking liquid for is to kind of gradually bring the eggs up to temp okay. so they're kind of that way I don't put um, kind of cold eggs in there and then hit them with the tip you know with the heat and turn them into scrambled eggs so so basically in the in the pyrex pan you're going to have the turkey and the vegetable mix yep. first and yep. then you're going to okay yeah and I think we're close enough so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring the Pyrex how, over how, here. And so, okay, so, so our I'll, listeners I'll might not be quite as ready. Yep. But they'll know. Yeah, this is, these are a little on the warm side. So this is what we've got going on now. Okay. Yeah, you can tell the yellow squash seems to have cooked them. Yeah, it's, it's more so than the zucchini, but I think it'll be fine. It'll cook more in the yeah. squash casserole. Yeah, and then we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to kill the heat. Actually, so what I'm going to do right now while it's still hot, I'm going to dump the turkey in and I'm going to dump the thyme in. And that's like two teaspoons of thyme. And now I'm just going to stir this in. Oh yeah, God, that turkey smells great because I smoked it on the egg. So now getting that, uh, 
get it, getting it, having that heat hit it, all of a sudden it gives you all that great smoke flavor from the or smell from the turkey. So when you put this in there, you don't want to just dump it in there because you need the. Because I want to save some of the cooking liquid. Okay. I'm gonna try and see if I have a spoon that will work. Yeah, here we go. This is a little better, a little more slotted than this wooden one. Yeah. So just dropping it in here. And then drain this a little bit. This will make a pretty big size dish. It will make and a big size like dish. Half the amount of squash. Yeah, I know. It, I, I can't imagine. I mean, if you went ahead and did four pounds of squash, that's a lot of squash. That's a lot of squash. I mean, I love squash, but that's a little much. So this also just squash casserole, even without the meat, could be a nice a nice side for uh, somebody's Christmas. Oh, meal, absolutely. Right? Or, yeah. Because the nice thing about squash like this is, you know, you and I were talking earlier about maybe doing uh, lamb instead of you know, these some dripping liquids in and out. Um, it's like we're probably going to do lamb for Christmas. Well, you know, this would go great with lamb. I mean, it also go great with turkey. Right. But you mean as a side dish? As, as a side meat, dish, yeah. But meat. then, you know what? If you have like leftover lamb, you could make one of these and put the lamb in it. So, um, but if you just use the squash and you didn't have the turkey, would you want more squash then? Is that one of the reasons you put less? Well, no, because even when I, like when I made this one the other day, I did it with um, the, the same amount of squash. So, the, the, you know, one pound of zucchini and one pound... And it still made it, you know, a, a large size serving dish. So yeah, I just I think that, that that original recipe, the proportions on it were just a little aggressive. But you know, if you're doing this for a large gathering for um, Thanksgiving, yeah, I mean, you, you could probably get away, you know, this, you think about it, we're about halfway full on this. Mm -hmm. So if we didn't have the turkey in there and we had both of them, you know, up two pounds of uh, the squash and two pounds of zucchini, it'd probably fill it up pretty close mm -hmm. to the top. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it wouldn't work. I was just like, okay, that seems like a lot of squash and zucchini. All right. Yeah, this is definitely, we got a little more cooking liquid this time, which is good. There's still some on the side. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. get that. Once I get the cooking liquid in there, then I can kind of. And this has got, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, onions in here as well, which you know, that's incredible flavor there. All right, so now then, I'm gonna move this out of the way. This is my. Uh, this, this is my eggs and coconut milk. Let's see if this yes cool down enough. I can. So I'm just gonna so what put. What are you ready to do? So I'm gonna pour just a. I hadn't cooled down that much actually. <laughs> you know I envy those folks that are, that like are able to just grab this stuff and handle it barehanded. I'm just not one of those guys. And so I'm just putting a little bit in. Now I'm gonna whisk it. So, so a little bit about a. Yeah, that was probably a couple of so? tablespoons. Couple tablespoons. Yeah, okay. I'm just trying to bring this thing up to tamp a little bit without cooking the eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you put the eggs in there right now, you have, like you said, scrambled yeah. eggs. And it's, you know, they're, they're How probably... How much cooking liquid will you want ultimately with the eggs? Um, I'm, all of it. Okay. Yeah. Just a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it already kind of has a little bit of a heavier texture, so I may be, you know, a little bit on the, uh, you know, Denny's Grand, Grand Slam breakfast here, but we'll see. It's just, it's... Not quite like tempering chocolate, but it's a little bit like mm. it. Mm. 
you're going to do with this when this is all. I'm going to pour it in. I'm going to pour That'll pour over yeah. the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're just going to pour that mixture and then we'll stir it around in there. closer almost got it all in there so that ended up being a, a, at least a cup of cook, cooking mm -hmm, liquid, right mm -hmm. yeah I, you know more. part of it was that you know i got you like added. probably more moisture release from the mushrooms this time i cooked them you know that's the one thing when i talk about fearless cooking right there's so many things that can change how something cooks right i mean as crazy as it sounds like even changes in barometric pressure mm -hmm. are going to change how things cook right the temperature that the ingredients you know that uh, that you start off with are gonna you know have an effect okay so now that i've got all that in here i'm just going to pour this over the, the egg oh, mixture over yep and then i'm going to kind of get it all to mix around all right here So we're just gonna, gonna stir this in because we want it like completely mixed in. Mm -hmm. All right, now then, what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna put it in the oven. We're gonna set the timer for, actually before we do that, let's get any last little bits of goodness out of here. Onions and garlic. There's some onions and garlic and a little mushroom, you know, like crumbs there we go all right that's all in there now let me move this other way let's see how for the most part ah, mushroom okay so you you're not adding another layer of salt and pepper at this point mm -hmm. you're not adding another layer of salt and pepper at this point mm -hmm. no I'll, I'll adjust it at the very end yeah go yeah. So what I'm going to do is put this in. The oven's at 350. We're going to set a timer for 30 minutes. Well, you know what? This is really interesting. Guess what this is? Oh, this wow. was a um, thing of kale that we had in last night. Oh my goodness! Still in the oven. We no never I saw out. something kind of pretty. Yeah. So that's what oh, that dear, is. Dear. Wow. That's All right. Okay. So well, that's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Well, there's some good burnt kale chips in there. Yeah. I was like, well, why didn't we have more leftover kale than we did? Actually, you know what? This will be fine. Interesting. Yeah. Well, um, although it has did sit in the oven today. Yeah, but you know, it was it was vegetable and oil, so there really okay. isn't Maybe anything in there that okay. is uh, untoward. So we're good. Okay. So, so we just made some minutes, kale chips. Thirty, 30 minutes. minutes. I will yeah. set the timer. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I've got the, uh, the the almond flour here. I'm going to grab a bowl. And I'm going to put two tablespoons of butter in it. Once again. So what do you what what are you fixing now? What so now I'm going to put I'm going to do an almond flour crumble that we're going to put on top. Actually, you're going to put it on top. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Okay. So you know what? That's probably about two tablespoons. That, that's probably more realistically about three, but it'll work just fine. So I'm going to put this in the microwave for um, 40 seconds. Let's see what it looks like. So what will you be doing next with the butter and the? Almond? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the butter in with the almond flour, and I'm going to stir that up with a, a fork, kind of mash it up into a paste, and then we're going to sprinkle that on top. It, when this thing dings at 30 minutes, and I'm going to kind of give you instructions and leave you on your own. So when it when your um, timer goes off in 30 minutes, you're going to pull the, the dish out. You're going to put it somewhere. You're going to put a hot pad under it, typically. Put it down, and then we're going to take this crumble mixture, mm -hmm. and you're going to spread it over the top. Okay. You're going to take a your microplane and your... Um, your nutmeg. your nutmeg, and you're going to just put the finest 
like dusting of nutmeg on top. If you didn't have a, an actual nutmeg. You can um, use powdered nutmeg. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's see what this looks like. Yep, ah. it's done. All the way melted. All the way melted. Okay. All right. So I'm going to grab a fork. And I'm just going to kind of make a hole here in the middle. And then I'm going to pour that in, and we're just going to mix it up. And what we're what we're looking for is kind of like a paste. Okay. Yeah, here we go. So what does this do the, to the squash casserole? It just kind of gives it this kind of a uh, kind of a breadcrumb type mm -hmm. thing on the top. Right, is what this is supposed to approximate. Yeah, That's I was right. a little heavy handed with the butter, so it really is not as like crumbly. Um, so I, if you use it, flour. yeah, if you use a, a, like the real two um, uh, two tablespoons instead of my uh, eyeball three. But it's still going to be fine because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of spread it out over the top. Okay. okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the, the the casserole dish out. You're going to put it here. You're going to put you're going to spread this over the top. Okay. Right. You're going to do a light dusting of uh, nutmeg. You're going to put it back in the oven for 12 minutes. Okay. okay. That's going to get this like done, but it's still not going to be that golden brown. Mm -hmm. Then what you're going to do is that you're going to turn the broiler on and you're going to you're going to open the oven door so that you can kind of see it and you're going to watch it because the recipe called for three minutes well the other day i cooked this at 400 degrees and after about i was like really perfect about a minute but i was like ah, i need to go a little bit longer well at about two minutes it was burned okay so you, once again remember with the toast you, you if you burn it that's kind of harder to recover from so with this, what you're looking for is this kind of a honey brown. Okay. That's the color. And then pull it, and you're good to go. So this is going to just sit here and hang out while that goes for 30 minutes. Whenever, you're, whenever your timer goes, take your casserole dish out, spread your uh, almond butter flour mixture across the top, hit it with just a little bit of nutmeg, Put it back in the oven, the 350 degree oven, set it for 12 minutes, then, you know, turn it, turn your oven to broil, broil it for, you know, in a minute, start really paying okay. attention because it's going to be about a minute to two minutes is where I think your, your kind of your magic spot is, and you're going to be finished. Now, here's the thing, guys, I'm not doing fearless cooking for the next two weeks. So you guys enjoy time with your family over the holidays. I will have a recorded session that'll go out the weekend. It'll be for the weekend of the fourth. And I don't know what we're going to cook yet. I'm going to um, uh, kind of query my kids going, all right, what do y'all want to cook together that we'll record? And then there's going to be some, like, some exciting changes for 2020 that I think you guys will enjoy. And uh, I'm really looking forward to cooking with you guys in the new year. And it's been a privilege and an honor to cook with you this year. And uh, look, I, we, I will definitely be posting some stuff to the group uh, be, between now and the end of the year. So in, enjoy the rest of the, the session and uh, talk to you guys soon. Happy holidays. Thanks a lot. Happy holidays.